gamers. Today we are doing how to play Delhi in season three, specifically how to do Delhi Tower of Victory build. Let's go. So what I'm gonna do is explain what Tower of Victory is good against, when you should be doing it, and uh, how you're supposed to play it. Season 1 and Season 2 guides for Delhi are basically the same build. Season 2 is the updated version of Season 1. Uh, that guide and that build is still viable, so if you want to learn uh, Delhi Dome of the Faith uh, build, you can check that one out. Everything you need to know about Delhi is not out yet, but it will be out soon, depending when you watch this, maybe it's already out. So today we're gonna learn how to do Delhi Tower of Victory. Let's get into it. Uh, so first things first, we're gonna open with a mill immediately and this villager will also build a house. The first villager that comes out will be building a mosque into the berries and you're gonna put five villagers on the closest wood. Now, last season there was a build where you could put lumber camp and then chop wood from there instead of doing this. But because the straggler trees, which are these three trees, have been moved closer to um, to the TC, it doesn't really make sense to build a lumber camp because the, the tree is so close to your TC, basically. Uh, so what you want to do is get 100 wood. So you're going to put these five on one of the straggler trees. If there was a tree here, I would preferably put it there because it's closer to the mill. But because my villagers spawn here, I guess I could have done it on this one, but yeah. You're gonna get 100 wood. And the reason you wanna get 100 wood is because 50 wood extra will be for a lumber camp and 50 wood will be for the mining camp. <clears throat> so I already got 50 and I'm gonna get 50 more and then I'm gonna send all these villagers onto the food. Boom. There we go. So right now, as you're sending these to the food, you should have eight villagers total, and they all go <clears throat> on the berries. The next three villagers will be going on gold. Uh, one thing with Delhi that is extremely, extremely important, doesn't matter if you're playing Tower of Victory or Dome of the Faith, you instantly need to queue upgrades. This is, this is like the whole point of Delhi. The whole point of Delhi is their stuff is free. So you need to make the most use out of it. Like the moment a building finishes, insta start upgrades, right? Uh, don't wait because the more time you wait, not only you get the upgrade slower, but you get that daily bonus, which is the free upgrades slower. So the moment meal finishes, you're gonna start wheelbarrow and survival techniques. And in the mosque, you're gonna start efficient production plus piety. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Try not to put all eight villagers on the same berry because they're gonna go around each other. I think I moved a couple of these onto this one in a bit. Yeah, there we go. So they're kind of more spread. You don't you don't want to exhaust one berry completely immediately. You want them like this, basically. Uh, regarding mosque, it's the most important to build it near a mill for the wheelbarrow. So if my mill was here, I would try to build mosque here so I catch the lumber camp and the mill. If my mill was here, uh, I would try to build a mosque here to catch the gold mine and the uh, mill. So mill plus whatever you can catch in the radius is good because you want to spread that influence so you get faster upgrade times. Mm. All right, eight on food. So you're going eight on food, not seven like with the other sieves. And you go three on the gold. Once you do that, you're going to start rallying onto the wood line. And you're gonna build a lumber camp, and you're instantly gonna get the upgrade. Obviously, you cannot upgrade the specialized pick right now because that's in feudal age. But the moment you get the lumber camp, you wanna start forestry ASAP because it's free. So, so far, this is pretty standard. This is exactly the way you would play Dome of the Faith. Once you start aging up, this is where the builds differentiate. Here we go Tower Victory. For those that don't know, Tower of Victory increases the attack speed by 20% of all infantry when produced within their influence. So one thing I want to note, this is changed. You used to uh, have to build barracks around it, or the units had to move past the landmark to get the buff. But now, as long as you can see that the Tower of Victory is now in the influence, so if I build a barracks here or archer range here, they will the units will get a buff the moment they get out. So 
any unit produced within the barracks or archery range in the influence will get that buff. So that's something to consider and something to know. Uh, we're going to be aging up with three. I don't age up with four because uh, this build specifically, you don't gain anything by aging up with four. Technically, you get faster upgrades, but it's not that important to rush it. Uh, you, it has a slower build up than Dome of the Faith, and I'll explain a little bit uh, why. So right now, what I did is I took three from food onto the Tower of Victory, and I moved one from food onto the gold mine. So we want to have four on gold. So Dome of the Faith build uses two on gold. For Tower of Victory, you want four because you need to produce scholars, and your scholars cost 150 gold. So you need four on gold in order to sustain that. So the moment you start aging up, three on Tower of Victory, one extra on gold for a total of four. You can see the worker split right now is four, 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 three on the landmark, and I'm gonna keep rallying onto the wood line. Okay. And obviously we build a house, upgrades are still going. And the first hundred wood we want to be using on is mosque. Another mosque. So again, this is a difference from uh, the tau uh, the uh, Dome of the Fate build. With Dome of the Fate, you do not build another mosque because your landmark is a mosque, basically. But with um, Tower of Victory, you need a second mosque because you need to produce scholars. And this one, this one mosque will be researching. This other mosque will be producing scholars. That's how it works. So we're going to build a mosque. And then we're gonna continue rallying onto the wood. We're gonna need a lot of wood for this build because we need moss, we need two blacksmiths, we need barracks, we need archer range, potentially stables, more houses. And the moment this one finishes, you're gonna start a scholar immediately. And right now what I like to do is I hotkey these two mosques. So when I age up, I'm gonna click up upgrades on this one. And whenever I want to build a, a scholar because these two are both selected when you build a scholar it will always be building from this one because this one already has stuff in queue and another reason why it's good to hotkey these together is when eventually the upgrades finish uh, you know the game will build like one scholar on one mosque one scholar on the other mosque so it's more efficient that way tower victory finishes and boom so what do I do first? So you basically need to get every upgrade in the game, okay? The most important thing to start is the mosque one, which is Sanctity. That is the most important one because you want to capture sacred sites. So if you look at Q right here, you'll see I'll start queuing everything. Come on, look at this. Boom. I got that. I got these queued up. I got boom, boom, boom. Everything is now queued up that I have right now. Uh, obviously I need blacksmiths to queue up more stuff. Now, I played this as if I'm playing against a Night Civ. So the reason why I, do, why I say against a Night Civ specifically is because those are a little bit more dangerous games. And I got um, textiles immediately. So whichever Civ you're playing against, even if it's English, if it's an aggressive Civ, just get textiles. If textiles saves one of your villagers by surviving, it paid off like it's worth it you are delaying one villager so if you build this villager and then textiles technically you have more economy but if you're playing against aggressive civ just get textiles so you don't lose villagers for no reason um now if you're playing against a night civ like i said you want to build a barracks that's you know not an not an option uh you have to build barracks if you're playing against other Civ, I would advise you to scout what they're doing because this is... You don't want to be aggressive right now. You need stuff to research, to build up, and then you go. So you kind of want to respond instead of dictate the tempo with this Delhi build. So if I'm playing against China and they open stables, I will open barracks. If they open an archer range, I will open horsemen, right? Um... So you're gonna have to adjust your build and depending what you're meeting because for now you're the one on the defensive. Um, so let's go. So I'm gonna make a barracks in a little bit. There it is. And I wanna add two blacksmiths. 
once the villagers building the landmark finished, they went back on food. So right now I have seven on food and I'm still rallying onto the wood until you have about 13 workers on wood. Now, there are two options with, uh, three options with Delhi. You can go Spearman Archer, you can go Horseman Spearman, or you can go Horseman Archer. Against non-Knight Sivs, the best thing to open with is Horseman Archer if, only if, you have the Micron multitasking. I would only suggest this if you're Diamond or higher. Because in order for the Horseman to pay off, you need to be good at using them. You need to harass, you need to multitask, and so on. It's probably the best because it keeps your army active, but it is the hardest to use. Spearman Horseman can be used against Knight Sivs, where you go Spearman, they go Knights, or, you know, the other way around. And then they go Archers, you go Horsemen. Uh, that is the easiest response to that, and it's the easiest to micro, because you're just basically A-moving, you're putting horsemen on archers, spearmen on knights, that's it. But, if you, if you want to grow like a big death ball, and you want to fight in feudal for a very, very, very long time, which is where this build shines, you want to go spearman archer. Spearman archer has a lot of micro, it's probably the most micro-intensive, Spearman Horseman is the easiest, and Horseman Archer, I think, is the best, but it is the most multitasking APM in, uh, uh, intensive. So, the reason why Spearman Archer is, quote-unquote, the best is because they're both infantry and they get 20% attack speed. The Horsemen do not get attack speed, so that's something to consider. And Archers, as ranged units, stack or work the best with Tower of Victory because ranged units have the highest DPS in game usually. So if they get attack speed buff, they will be able to do to deal insane amounts of damage. And if you ever get in a situation where the enemy has archers, you have archers, you should always be winning fights with this build because not only your archers have 20% attack speed, but also because you have scholars to heal. So <clears throat> in this specific game, I'm going to be going for Spearman Archer plus scholars. So, what is the difference between this build and Dome of the Faith? Dome of the Faith works really fast. Um, it tries to capture the sacred sites as fast as possible and kind of sling you into castle. That's the whole point of the Dome of the Faith. You want to go to knights, you want to go to men-at-arms and to unlock more free upgrades. That is Dome of the Faith in a nutshell. With, with Tower of Victory, you actually want to stay in Feudal as long as possible. You don't want to ever transition out of Feudal if you manage to put your opponent in, in Feudal. If your opponent manages to reach Castle, you're probably going to need to go Castle 2 eventually. But uh, Tower of Victory is the best if you're in Feudal and if your opponent is in Feudal. And it's probably the best um civ landmark combo to fight in feudal it pretty much beats anything including french and english if you can transition out of these five six minute timers to eight minutes without taking damage so um the simple reason for that is you have scholars for healing you have all upgrades for free which means you will have more units than your opponent because they have to pay for the upgrades and because you have units that have higher attack speed now, another good thing about Spearman Archer is, it is not a food intensive at all. So if you're fighting in feudal for 30 minutes, your opponent will run out of food first, if they're producing horsemen or knights, which means they're, they're gonna have to go farms first, which is uh, a very good thing for you. <clears throat> so what is your goal? Your goal is to capture three sacred sites because you want to use all the sacred site gold income on producing double scholar. So this build finally enough has more scholars than Dome of the Faith. And once you have three sacred sites, you can also move these four workers from gold onto uh, wood or food depending on what you need. Um, all right, so blacksmith number one completed. Blacksmith number two is about to get completed as well. And the first upgrade you want to get is steal the arrow if you're going archers. Um, and then you want to get iron undermash for your spearmen against archers and the melee armor into the other one. And obviously you can queue the upgrades in your blacksmiths. Now, if you're going for spearmen horsemen, you want to get uh, bloomery 
and Iron Undermash. So you get the uh, arrow uh, armor against archers for your spearmen, and you get uh, Bloomberry for both your spearmen and horsemen. So depending on what you go for, that's what you get. If you're playing horseman archer, I would probably advise to... Um, I personally like going damage damage with that if you're very very active but you can also go uh, steel arrow plus iron undermash if you're gonna do a lot of raiding with your horsemen iron undermash is really good so either of these three is fine if you go um, archer horseman as long as you get steel arrow the second one I feel like is kind of optional yeah mosques also give extra influence so as you can see this mosque also gives the influence here so this barracks, it's in the influence, as you can see. It has a little plus. So this spearman just came out, and if you look, it has attack speed increased by 20%. Now, um, if you're playing against Horseman Knight Civ, you want to use spearman defensively. And for right now, I'm not going on sacred sides, I'm just chilling. Unless the opponent is completely passive, you can go now with spearman and start walling the sacred sides. But if the opponents are aggressive, just defend for now. You don't need to do anything because your power spike is when all these f things finish. That's when you're the strongest. Starting all my upgrades, as you can see. And I have four scholars and I'm putting them all in mosques because I just want to get researchers uh, up as fast as I can. If there was knights coming, you can also put a scholar in the barracks to help with the upgrade and produce units as well. So I have 13 on wood, and then after that, I will be rallying all the workers onto the food. I think I changed this one onto the food in a little bit. And I'm adding an archery range as well, right now. And I'm gonna put one of the scholars into the archery range just to boost up the speed production. So now my archers are producing every seven seconds. Because right now I'm set up and when you do this build, you'll feel like you have no wood for, for buildings. You're like struggling to build this, struggling to build that. Which is why, why it's important to build archer range at the end. Once you have your two blacksmiths, once you have barracks, once you have a second mosque, then you build an archer range because archer range will completely drain your wood supplies. Uh, and that's why you want to get it last. And once you build up all these buildings, then you just spend all your resources onto units and all to scholars because there's nothing else left to produce and this is the beauty of delhi i don't have to worry about getting an eco upgrade or this upgrade or stop production for any reason now you just pump units so um, once you start going for this you can split scholars like this uh, to try capture sacred sites only if it's safe if it's not safe, if you feel like opponent has knights roaming or horsemen roaming, it's okay to keep all your units together because again, Dome of the Faith wants to capture sites as fast as possible, but Tower of Victory doesn't need to. Like, you're not on super easy timer where you need gold. I had to do a massive wall here because this stone was blocking me. Um, another thing you can do is that you just saw me do right there. When you build a wall, oops, you can double click the edge here and delete the end wall palisades which will save you some wood you start building the walls and you start capturing the sacred sites so right now the the, the production is just gonna pop off completely and the easiest way to balance delhi economy is whenever you have too much wood not enough food then put more workers on uh you got a resource right so try to balance your resources by putting your workers wherever whichever resource you're you're lacking once i capture these three sites i'm going to move away from the gold because you're going to have so much gold income from the sacred sites that you'll actually be able to produce double scholar from uh both of these mosques at a time so you're going to have insane amounts of scholars coming out um the reason by the way you don't want to go castle necessarily is because once you go castle, this whole point of mass infantry kind of dies out a little bit because the opponent can make men at arms, the opponent can make knights, the opponent can make mangonels, keeps. <clears throat> so the strength of this diminishes quite a bit. And you can, if you're aggressive enough, <clears throat> you can starve out your opponents, excuse me, 
with just mass units. And I'm gonna show you in a little bit. This is this is pretty much the, the whole guide. Uh, like I said, regarding unit comps, you should try all three that I mentioned and see what works for you. Obviously, if they're opening with longbows, don't go spearmen, right? If you're playing against English, that is one sieve that they're always gonna have longbows, right? So if you're playing against English, you want to open horsemen into archers because they're going to go longbow into spear. So that's kind of logical, right? Don't make spearmen against English. I walled off all three sacred sites. And if you look, my upgrades for blacksmith, the first round is done, the second round is finishing. You can also add more production buildings, by the way. Eventually, even uh, having scholars in both production buildings will not be enough because you're gonna have like 25 villagers and food, 25 with wood. Just add more barracks and add more archer ranges. So here we go. By the way, it's not necessarily wrong to go castle. Uh, just Tower of Victory is better in feudal. That's all point. Against what the enemies have to defend against this. Which is not a lot. So, oh yeah, this for some reason wasn't walled, so I'm just gonna wall it here. So this is what I wanted to show you. And this is another reason why this build is so strong. Um, imagine that you go fast castle into mass men at arm is English against this. Well, if you do that, then the Delhi will get all three sacred sites. And if Delhi sees that you have zero units, Delhi can also go castle then. And then Delhi makes crossbows with 20% attack speed. And then you lose the game because, uh, yeah. This is the, like, the thing is, that's the part, guys, where you have to use your brain in AoE4. And it's like, if you see English making zero units and rushing castle... Just capture the sacred sites, stop making units, and go castle yourself. And if you see, like, men-at-arms coming, just make crossbows. Because then you can just win on sacred sites. That's why Delhi has more decision-making to it. Um, because you have to make these adjustments with any Civ. But that's why Delhi is, uh, I feel like, not as played. Because people think it's, like, too complicated. When in reality... Not so much, in my opinion. Especially this build. I feel like it's very straightforward. Um, Delhi Tower of Victory build reminds me a lot on, on like a, like French and English with the simple pushes. The build order part, part is complicated to start all your upgrades. But once you do it, right, right now you're just massing units. You're just massing units. You're not doing anything else. How do you deal with sieves that go fast castle? Any sieve that goes fast castle, you capture sacred sites and you just go crossbows, man-at-arms, or crossbows, knights, or whatever. Um, the one sieve that I would not advise doing this against is the one that's best at castle rushing, which is HRE. Uh, in general, Delhi has never been a good sieve against HRE since the beginning of the game. So, yeah. Uh, I would probably, if I, uh, if I am playing Delhi, I would probably do Dome of the Faith build against HRE specifically, because I think it's just straight up better. This build takes a while to build up. Obviously, I'm attacking at 11 minutes. You can fight a lot earlier, especially if your opponent has no units, you can be aggressive a lot earlier. But I gathered up units like this to show you <clears throat> how good the healing is from Scholars. I have 10 scholars already, so I'm gonna attack into Barbican plus ATC. I look at my units. I think no units die. Look at this. Oh. Okay, one unit died, the scholars are dented. But from here on out, if you guys didn't know, even if opponent has 15 units in the TC, the scholars will actually out heal it. So just like French or English push with rams, with Delhi, if you have like 20 spearmen, you don't need rams. You can literally just aim move into TC. And the scholars will out heal all the damage. And you can use your archers to pick off any units. Is there any micro for the scholars? I would strongly advise you to just aim move the scholars and let them do their own thing. But don't aim move them there. Aim move them here. Right? So that they try to get to that position when they're near units. Uh, what I do 
do, I'm gonna move away so we don't hear the, the shots. What I do is I micro my spearmen and scholars in one hotkey group and my archers alone in the hotkey group. So you can see no units are dying because it's just getting out healed by the scholars. And even when you go on the TC. Oh, this guy almost died, but got killed. So once you reach this point, or even a bit earlier, Delhi, Delhi is very much. I'm gonna leave it again um, because of the sounds. Delhi is very much played like French or English in feudal, where you just go aggression and you want to trade out with your opponent as much as you can. So. Again, the initial builder for Delhi might seem scary, but once you learn it, you just get used to it. You get in a tempo where it's like, oh, my blacksmith's finished, let's start the upgrades. Oh, my this finished, let's start the upgrades. And after that, it becomes pretty, pretty straightforward. And for the enemy, it is very, very difficult to fight against Delhi because of the scholar's healing. Sometimes you enter a fight against Delhi and you're like, oh, I can take this. And then scholars just heal everything up and you're, uh, you're dead. Do Delhi scholars have healing bonus compared to other civs? No, they don't, but you can build them in feudal. And also you can get uh, 40 HP tech in feudal for them. Like I said, this this uh, build is very playable against every Civ. I would say it's probably the worst against HRE, and it's probably the best against uh, French and against English, surprisingly. Because they're feudal Civs, usually they like to fight in feudal, and this build is great for that. If you're playing against uh, Mongol, by the way, even if they get to castle, you can still beat them with just sheer amount of units because even if they have like 10 men at arms if you have 30 archers and 20 spearmen with delhi scholar healing the mongol will actually not be able to do any damage because it's funny how it works hre men at arms can beat you because they have a lot of damage upgrades uh other men at arms from other civs unless they're in massive massive numbers they actually don't have enough dps to kill your spearmen while they're getting healed by the scholars so if you see a Mongol that reached castle, it's okay to fight men at arms because of the amount of healing you will have. So that's something to keep the note of. The next video that I'm going to be releasing for Delhi specifically, maybe it won't be the next video on YouTube, will be everything you need to know about Delhi, where I talk about every single uh, intricacy about Delhi, all their bonuses and all that, like I did with the other civs. But this is the season three guide for Delhi. <clears throat> so once again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, check out my other videos i have guides for every single sim if you're watching on twitch thank you so much for watching as well have a great day night morning wherever you are i am out